Now, it might not look like much compared to what we're seeing on the right. We made some good progress this time. I've added improved collision detection. I've added a point system. Look, I can eat these ants. And the larvae quite well. And I've improved the level generation. It's far superior. No more weird little gaps in it. So, while it might not look like much, we're making good progress. First, let me show you how I fixed our pesky little level generator, where it was generating holes next to each other. And we didn't want that, we wanted it more to the game that we're seeing on the right here, where holes are generating sort of randomly, but they're not next to each other, there's, there's still at least one gap. So, I have that fixed, and now it's far superior to what we had before. Right, let me show you. In our current game, we are using a for loop to go through and randomly select holes in the level. As you can see, this is flawed as we are getting random holes that appear next to each other. And so what we want is that when we choose a random hole, the corresponding holes before and next to it do not get chosen as well, resulting in just one hole and an adjacent. I came up with a solution. It took me quite a while because I had a few errors and bugs with how to implement it, but this is my solution. Rather than pick a random hole or number between the ranges, I decided that why not create an array with the available holes. When a hole is randomly chosen, delete take that item from the array and its corresponding elements within the array. This means when it generates another item, it doesn't pick one that's within the array. Here, as you see, most of the code remains the same. I go through the height, I create an array, and within this array, I add each element within the width. So in this case, it'll be 0 to 15. I do this every loop, so it generates a fresh array. I still keep the random hole set to 0, clear, the, clear this array as 0, and I just generate a random holes, 3 plus 1, so it's 0 to 3, so a maximum of 4 holes can appear. I then loop through the array of holes, randomly holes that I have selected. Choose a random index from that list of available holes. Get the selected hole, add that to the random hole array that we've set. Then, if the random index we've chosen is 0, aka it's at the first element of the array, we don't want to choose you want to remove the element before it because it does not exist and we'll get an error, a bug, it will crash the game. So when we get this, we then take the plus two, so the first element and next element, and we equal it. Else if it's actually the last element of the array, so that means we don't want to remove the element after because we'll also get an error because it'll be out of range. And it else means that it's within both in the center of the array, more centered, Therefore, we can remove the item before and after it and the chosen one. In total, three elements of the array will be chosen. When I now run the code, you should see that we shouldn't get any holes that correspond to next to each other. There we go. As you see here, none of the holes are clumped together and we have any more evenly matched holes. I may improve this further rather than having these scattered holes and maybe have holes more in the center. Perhaps a method would be to use, rather than a uniform randomization, we could use a more normal distribution, aka it's more likely to pick or, uh, numbers within the center of the array rather than the outskirts evenly. Uh, but we'll come, come to that for later for now. I've now made further improvement to the collision detection system. Previously, it just checked if the ant was in the same position as the tongue was in the grid of our array. So if I show you here, I move my tongue down, and once it collides with the tongue, it should also remove, yep, and there we go, nice. Now, as you saw, about half the ant went through before it went through, or in this case, the blue square. This is because of the way we are drawing the tongue, I believe. So there's an origin point, and the origin point of the red tongue that's been checked on the go, it's the top left part and it's not accurate, so I need to change that. But for now, the actual code's really good, so that's a minor change. Also, when I move my head tongue down, and let's just have ant pass, it will also check every time I make a movement, it checks if I've eaten a tongue, which is good. Now, to show you the code, here's the enemy enemy's uh, code for checking. So we have a function called check tongue, and this gets the ant's x and y position plus the actual struct of the ant. 
and I just check the next two tiles in front of it or behind it so we add the right on the right hand side and the left hand side and it checks if the it is in range from the level so I've added these new global functions as well and so we can get grab level position rather and check if it's within the array range and the reason I did this is because I was just calling directly to the level and it was making the code really disorganized uh, you tend to want to avoid global variables because you're changing them all over the place it can cause all sorts of problems so I thought I'd always have a, an array to call a function in within that package to call back to which makes it more organized maybe there's a better way uh, we can look into that further but for now we check if the array is within range and then we get the position of where our tongue is and we use that by checking if it within the grid it equals 2 we're still checking by grid by grid basis and then we return if ever we are either false or true so check collisions of these so the, the position of the ant and the position of the tongue as you see we're just making a tongue on the go and I don't think this is we should actually have an array of the tongue a rectangle which I think we can set the origin and be much far more accurate we also do it for the left hand side as well and then we just return false and I think I don't even need this because I know we will in case the for loop isn't met we still need to return something so yes we need that we have a global function ant eaten which is so when the player moves we're calling on the ant eaten uh, we'll get back to that next and then we have grab ant which just grabs the ant's position so we essentially have the same code from previously up here in that function so I actually just need to do a bit of reorganization but again in the player we check and when the player moves we check uh, ant or well, maybe that's not the best best right name for the function but we could do check ant position or something and all we do is we get the ant position with the grab ant global function check if it's collided, collided with the tongue and then we just tell it that ant has been eaten so yes nice this is really good so far so I've made some changes to the way the level generate but I've also started adding the point system so if I eat this tasty ant ooh 100 points I keep going down mmm tasty another 100 points and the points and the graphics are kind of temporary I've only just put the numbers and their estimated position because if I were to resize the level which I kind of want it so the player can like have a custom level layout by a bit of dynamics it would also need to and I'm going to change the position of these so that can come later but for now I just want the functionality so you can see it's got 10 might mount 1 lives to 0 0.0 high score uh, and I assume we'll have for the high score like a YAML or text file where we'll just pull it and read and write it it's not really but I don't think we're too bothered whether someone just changes their height personal high score because it'll be sort of there's no multiplayer integration so it's not really a concern the lives and the termite mound don't do anything it's only really the points that actually work and uh, actually dynamically change you see and it's actually uh, quite simple so we just at the start of the game we just draw the points and we store them here and all we do is put lives and put a string convert of them into a, their variable and then draw the text simply and we hard code their position for now which is um probably not ideal especially if some if in, if we make it so the user can dynamically change the resolution of their monitor and we have a global function uh, reward points so it just sends the ant type so I've updated in enemies dot go I now have a type and so with the ants that we have currently it sets the type to ant and so it just checks if it is it'll give it 10 100 and it increments this and worms eaten worms are 200 of the queen ant is a thousand and the reason we want it in Grenese is that there's an end bonus which is the ant seems in times of worthy in times 10 and then we add that to the points they add I've also made improvements to the collision detection with the ants it no longer checks by grid it now checks via the rectangles and as you see it properly goes through obviously it didn't there it didn't it went through here because the the end of the tongue is not being checked for at the moment I'm left that out it's only being checked whenever the player moves but as you see it's actually properly checking I think it's still quite buggy because I've had it sometimes where it will go 
inside it, so we'll just do one, we'll do this check here, see if it will go inside the tongue. No. Maybe here? No. no it's pretty, I think it's good enough for now. Uh, and you can see them appearing here, this is because I'm setting the position to minus 10x, and I guess it's still within frame, so it pops in, then it gets hidden. So I need to also fix that. So for the uh, tongue, I just made another struct called tongue. And all it has is the rectangle and the position. And so, and it's an array of tongues. So it's similar, it's essentially the same as tongue length. But instead, we are now just appending the position and a creating a rectangle based on it here. And we still drop it the same way. Now the annoying thing is with this is that trying to, f we, there's awesome possibilities really we just take a naive approach which is the ant just searches through the array of all rectangles and see if it collides with any of them no matter where it is even the ones that are really far away we take the the same approach as before what we check is if a rectangle was in close range and i've stuck with the original one uh but now we turn what we do is return the tongue position so we check if it's in the the array and it's in the position if, if it is we return that position within the array if not we just return minus one and we also have a function just returning the rectangle so within enemies.go we check if it's within range if it is we then return the tongue position if the tongue position is greater than one minus one so it's in the within the array we get the rectangle position and return check if it's collided if it obviously has collided then we we set this it would only make sense for us to add another enemy type or not really an enemy type but the ant larvae they just sit there and do nothing the eggs in this case and the player must eat all the larvae in order to progress to the next level and all they do is spawn on every row uh, the same as the normal ants except for the bomb row where the queen ants spawn and i've already added it where you can eat them up and because we already have the point system i can just tell it hey this is an art larvae type and the ant eats it. Uh, it basically, the, most of the functionality is the same as the ants, in fact, because we're using the same struct. Now, for the code, it's quite simple. We just spawn it the same way as we do with the ants. We just go through a new array spawn larvae and just check if it has been eaten or not. Now, the larvae doesn't respawn, so we don't actually have to check a timer, so we just leave. That's all we need for it when it comes to the handler of, of drawing it. And when it comes to preparing it, it's essentially we do it in the same loop of checking the rows, check if it's visible by two. But this time we just loop through the width of the map or level row, I guess. And then we just set it at the same time, set the false, set it to minus one, set the direction to zero, it doesn't because the direction is irrelevant, so we can just set it to zero. And we spawn its position to so X and the I, which is the I is the Y, so I should probably perhaps change that as well. Now I have it set in a new array because for us it's easier to calculate where the position of it is rather than try to loop through the array and then checking if it matches instead i thought i'll have it in a separate way and this way we can just check if we can get a position so the position is the position x of the tongue plus the y divided by two and times that by the width and we divide this by because we want it divisible by two, the, the larvae only spawns every two rows, so this is why we do that. And then we times it by the width, and we want to do them separately, oops, because we don't want to do the x, otherwise, it'll be out of range. And I also put some checks or if statements just to check if it's within range, uh, otherwise, we'll, if you go down to the bottom row where the queen is, it'll be out of range. Do the checks, it'll grab it, even though it doesn't exist. And we just do the same check with the ants, we just check if it's eaten. If it is eaten, we go back to the enemies and we just check what type is it is and we just append it like that. So this is much, it, requ it requires more memory because we're creating a separate array, I I would think. And, but it requires less CPU calculation because we're not leaping through every element in the array. So this is uh, when it comes to making games or any software, you decide, do I want to use more memory or do I want to use more processing power? So. In this case, I went for memory because it, we're only using a few megabytes, and I feel like it's better to save just the CPU and save on some calculations. While I'm at it, I thought, why don't I just add the queen ant? 
because of the ant structure we've used on the array, it should be really easy to implement, and it surely was. All I have to do is just check if it's on the last row here, set the position to zero x, the position x of where it's going to spawn, and then we loop through twice because there's only two queen ants. The, for now, I've set the position x as the width divided by three, so this is the third of the width of a row. Uh, but this is not great because the row is, if it's an odd number, they're not going to be evenly placed. So I think I need a different approach for that. Uh, position y plus one again. It's a bit of a whack way, you know, take away one and then add one. But this is what's required for us to get the, just the second to last row, because of the way it measures them and such. And then we set the queen, and all we do is set pretty much the exact same statistics uh, in the position, the rectangle, and then we choose the type as a queen ant, and then we append it to its array queen ant, and then same as the larvae, we loop through how many spawn queen ants, and if check if it's eaten or not, and then just draw it. So that's it. So I think that does it for this episode, we've made some good progress, we've added a better collision detection, we've added the ants, the larvae and the queen ants, all, all with their own type, and it accumulates the points available because we have a new point system, and we've removed some stuff around including the visual layout and the structure of the code. So uh, for the next episode, I think maybe I'll work on some of the art rather than using these squares, as you can see it's not visually looking good. Maybe choose a better background and get some of that sorted out. But we still have a lot of functionality, especially where sprites go and if we want custom load out the fonts and such. But, you know, we're making good progress. If you made it this far, then thank you. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Also comment if you have any questions or things that I could do better. I'm not the most perfect programmer. But I'm always looking for criticism and improvements in my own work as well. So please do if you have any suggestions and such. Anyway, yeah, and have fun eating those termites.